What's going on, Diecast World? This is Roger Dodger with Diecast Corner. Just because Mattel is an American company doesn't mean that all cars are offered in America. We're going to take a look at one set that isn't offered here in the United States. Oh, welcome back, everyone. As everybody knows, I had an awesome weekend. I found two Walmart dump bins within 24 hours of themselves. Not only are these the only two dump bins I've ever got to first, they're the only ones I've ever found a super treasure hunt in. So I found my first super treasure hunt to the weekend, six total, 11 regular treasure hunts, plus a host of other cars. But don't worry about that. Let's get to what we're talking about. So the series right here that uh, I know is offered in Canada, because that's where, if you look on eBay, that's where you're gonna get these. I like to big, uh, first off, I'd like to give a big thanks to Derek Patrum. He's the one who sold me this set. It's a really, really, really cool set. Hot Wheels Racing Road Racer set. Just wanna make sure it was Road Racer. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna show these in depth. I'm not gonna open these because these are a little bit expensive right now. Um, if we were trying to get these imported, I think each car is running close to, close to average for the set, roughly $20 per each car. So I'm sure that these only cost probably about $3.50 in Canada, uh, the equivalent to American money. But we're gonna take a little bit better look at these. Uh, I have a few of these already, um, but there's also something really cool about this set. This set has three, three first issue cars, okay? And, and let, me, let me tell you something about a first issue cars. Um, the Datsun uh, Bluebird 510, okay? That thing was offered, I don't think it's the first issue, but let me just give you an example of how this works. The thing was offered in the vintage racing set very, very similar to this. This is the Hot Wheels Racing. This was Hot Wheels Vintage Racing set, okay? And nobody cared about it. Nobody bat a finger to it. They left them in the stores. They just weren't popular. And then the RLC Dotson Bluebird 510 came out. It looks exactly the same. Only one, the RLC has the Red Lion wheels and the Dotson in the Road Racer, I mean, in the Vintage Racing set, it's got real riders. And it immediately, immediately, immediately jumped the price up of that vintage series out in $3.50 to close to, uh, you know, 75 to 100 bucks for that car. So just to give you an example, um, that there are three cars in here that have a first issue, and that's these three cars, which is really, really cool. My personal favorite is the BMW. I mean, that thing is just really, really nice. But let's go into these a little bit more in detail. So like I said, I'm not gonna take them out of the package, but I'll do the best I can to explain them when they're inside the package. Okay, so the first car that we'll check out is the 92 BMW M3, just because it's my favorite. And this is uh, the first casting of this car. And not only did they do an, a great job on it, it also comes with real riders too. So you can kind of see that with the gold five-star rims. Uh, this is like a pearl white paint with the red and blue stripes on the side, uh, red and blue tampons on the, on the roof with the number three with the M3 logo or the M logo there you can see. So good year decals, some Bill, Bill Stein, Bell, and you want to know what? Uh, they they couldn't have done this, this any better. There you go. You got the M logo in the back, M3 logo, BMW, the lights look very detailed on this one. Same thing with the front here. This comes on, uh, comes with the real riders, metal on metal, which is awesome. All right, and there's our our package here. All right, this is a 2012 set. It's a fairly old set, but I wanted to display them because, you know, I finally broke down on it and I bought the set and I got a, you know, a decent deal on it, so I might as well Advertise, but here these are the cars that are in the set 76 Greenwood Corvette 78 Porsche 935 slash 78 92 BMW M3 Chaparral Camaro James Gardner's Copa Corvette and 4 GT Okay, we'll just go through but Like I said, they've they've made a couple of these cars now, but none of them are real riders This is the only one so far and I'm really really 
waiting for a super treasure hunt to come out. If they make a super treasure hunt of this, I will be probably picking up four or five of them just because I'm a BMW fanatic. All right, that's the E92 M3. All right, so next one we have the 78 Porsche 935.78. Just comes in. It looks silver, but it looks zamic to me. It doesn't even look like it's painted, but it could be silver. You know, with the well, white, orange, and red uh, logo stripes on the side. Orange and red stripes on the top. With a 35, you got your Porsche emblem. Porsche on the back there. You know, no details in the rear here. This is strictly racing car, so. But, you know, Porsche, Goodyear. It has the Goodyear on the real riders. It comes with the same rims as the BMW, just a little different color pattern there, which is the, the five star, same ones that are on the Ferrari 599XX. So, but yeah, metal on metal. I mean, these cars are just super nice. Back is all the same as before. And you can see, you know, it comes in multiple different languages here. So, But yeah, this one also is a first of its kind casting. Uh, don't know how popular this is going to be. I think this car is in a Porsche set. I'm not quite sure. I have the Porsche set sitting over there. I, I can't really reach it right this one minute. But I think it is. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I need to do a Porsche set preview. But there we go. But it comes to the you know 35 on a side. You know Bilstein also. Bilstein is a German. Um, uh, suspension company if in case you know I have a set of nice racing Bilsteins on my E36 they, they cost a lot of money uh, but they're really really nice fully adjustable coilovers and everything else I'm sure that does what these are running <laughs> well just because I'm assuming you know Sparco for the seats alright but yeah that's our Porsche 935 slash 78 okay Next one in the set, we all seen this one, but this is the first of its kind casting, the 76 Greenwood Corvette. They just made a super treasure hunt of this one this year, so everybody should know this one, be pretty familiar with it. This one, I believe, looks a little bit nicer than a super treasure hunt, just because it's more of a racing version. You know, you can see it's got the America flag, the old style with the 13 original colonies on it, the, the circle one. Looks like a little band marching there. I think that's a band. Something like that. Spirit of Sebring for Sebring Racetrack of 76. So if you ever raced, uh, you know, played any of the video games, you'll notice Sebring. So uh, has the 76 logo on its side along with red, white, and blue stripes. Spirit of Sebring on the back. Then you have March 18th. March 18th through 20th. Then you have Cybe. And then we have uh, Champion, and I can't read that last one. I can't read the last one. But we have some names up on the top here. So we have M. Brockman, I'm sure he's a, he's a driver, and J. Greenwood, which would be the Greenwood Corvette. All right, in the front we have a couple more little tampos. That's why I like these race ones, because they come really decked out with all the cool tampos. Valvoline, Hurst, Champion. Then we have Goodyear up on the front here. You know, with the Goodyear on the tires. You know, uh, and that's what I, that's what was lacking in the uh, in the new uh, Real Rider set is that it had the Goodyear. You know, you can clearly see it had the Goodyear tampos, but it didn't have Goodyear tires. And that kind of threw me off a bit because I really did expect it. So with this older set right here, you can see that they really held true like you would expect them to, to have the Goodyear tires on there if they have Goodyear tampos. All right, that's our 76 Greenwood Corvette. All right, now we have three others. These have been made before, but these look really, really nice. I mean, just, I mean, the, the real rider just really set some of these cars off. This is our Chaparral Camaro. And this is a really, really nice 70s style Camaro here. I, I like this one. This has got the split bumper, which is my favorite type of Camaro for this one. Looks like the hood opens. I don't know. I, I don't know. It looks like the hood opens. Uh, I can't open it because it's got the blister. 
but this comes with uh, white uh, and blue and black tampos here. You can see the blue stripe with the number one with the Chevy sign in the center there on the roof. You know, it comes a Camaro on the side here. This also looks like a pearl white. Does it look, you know, white, white? Same thing in the 76 Greenwood Camaro. It's a pearl white. And it comes with also multiple decals on the side here. You know, Valvoline Champion Union. And another little one that I can't tell, that little circle one right there. I can't really tell. Too good. Sorry about my lighting. I have extra lights coming in, so I should be able to alleviate this shadow problem doing this little preview. All right, but it comes with uh, tail lights painted and no front headlights painted. Grill is black, but the one Chevy sign on the side. It comes with really nice. What is that? Uh, one, two, three. Eight spoke wheels. Really, really cool looking on this car. The nice kind of fat tire in the back. You can see that right there. And there's slicks too. There's no tread on those. It's pretty awesome. But yeah, that's our Chaparral Camaro. Right there in white and blue. All right, next one on the set is Jane Gardner's, James Gardner's Copo Corvette. All right, and this is in a really sweet metallic blue. I mean, this blue is awesome. I mean, I don't know if you can get the sparkles in there or not, but this is nice. This is a really probably one of the more better blues that you can have on a Hot Wheels car, on a diecast car, period. I mean, this just looks awesome. When it comes to this funky white, sort of looks like a trident stripe right here with the two spoke, then the, the third trident going all the way down, down the center here. It looks like your gas cap is right in the back, number 44. Your pop-up headlights. I, I think during those times, because they're racing, they didn't have the pop-up headlights. They converted them to uh, a flat mount. Um, don't quote me on that because I, you know, I'm not a big '70s racer guy. But I believe that's what they did uh, on some of the older cars. It reduces the aerodynamics of the pop-up lights. So, uh, so you can see a little bit of detail. You see the Corvette logo in the front there. Also, it has the really, really nice five-star chrome wheels with the good year tampos on them and let me see this says uh, uh, driver dick colstrand colstrand i can't really read that but it comes to number 44 gt a little black interior there james gardner's american American International Racing Team. So, but yeah, this is this is pretty awesome. They've made a couple of these cars since this is not a first issue on this car, but this is definitely one of the better issues. Let's just say that. I mean, this paint is stellar, beyond stellar. It looks beautiful. The camera does this thing no justice. I like to open a set, but I roughly, I think I paid 115 for this set. But yeah, James Gardner's Cabo Corvette. Okay, now the final car and one of my all-time favorite castings. I'll do a favorite casting video of this. This is the Ford GT40. And uh, I did one of these on the Fast and Furious video. It's the all blue, I think blue and white or blue and silver. It looks really, really nice. And this is another just phenomenal looking one, the black with the gold, with the gold rims. I mean, come on, this thing is nice. Man, these cars are way underrated, I mean, for for what they are. I mean, $20, I guess it's really, really good, <clears throat> but they just don't get the recognition I think that they deserve. These cars are just done up really, really nice. So we have some, uh, you know, the gold racing stripe tampo on the roof there. You know, you got your uh, rear engine I think these are mid-engines, what they call these. Number 12, with a white and red. Tampo with a black 12 on the inside. You know, uh, the Goodyear tires, awesome. And then we got a, a Holly Goodyear and a Bell Tampo with the GT40 stripe 
and the GT40 inside the stripe. In the back we have the red tail lights, exhaust coming out of the rear, and in the front we have some nice headlight tampos also. On the bottom we also have slicks for rear riders. But yeah, this one is another another really, really nice one. The only thing, see this? This is the newer one. The only thing that they're missing, this is the second version, they're just coming out with the new one now. But on the very first original version that they made, what would they call a, a Dan Gurney bubble? Okay, because Dan Gurney was so tall that in the driver's seat there was a bubble up on top. They call it the Gurney bubble. So on some of the original GT40 cars, you're gonna see that, that bubble up on top. That's not a design flaw, that's not for aerodynamics. That's so the guy can sit in a car and his helmet will, will have clearance for the top. They call it the, the gurney bubble. Well, these cars don't have it. The original ones should, and any good die cast car for those years should have the gurney bubble. I said, this is the second issue um, GT40. This is not the, the latest and greatest. This is not the earliest version, but this is still a super duper nice version. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I know it's a little funny. I'm a Ford, Ford race car lover and a BMW lover, two completely different ends of the spectrum, but you know, uh, I had a Ford Mustang growing up. I dated a girl whose dad was really, really into Fords, and he really got me into the Ford racing, <clears throat> the history of it. And I really just fell in love with the GT40, the AC Cobra, the Shelby Cobras, and the Shelby Cobra, the, the Daytona version, which is still today one of my all-time favorite cars. I'd love to have a kit car of that. But yeah, there we go. Ford GT40 in black and gold. All right, guys. Well, that's our that's our edition for today. You know, I hope everybody liked it. I know it's an older set. You know, sorry, but I just got this in, and I really just wanted to display it because, like I said, I don't, I don't think this set gets really enough recognition for for how decent it is. And there's a lot of sets like these, you know. And I, and I explained one of the things I was talking about with the you know the vintage racing. It's the same way, you know. Nobody cared about the Dotson Bluebird, but as soon as the RLC came out, it was a uh, it was a really really big hit. And I know that they made a Super Treasure Hunt of the Greenwood, you know. Uh, boy, I said I'm I'm really waiting for the Super Treasure Hunt of the BMW. There's been no BMW Super Treasure Hunts, unfortunately. Maybe next year they'll change that. I hope. Um, the I'll tell you the only thing that I do not like about this set: three of them are Chevys, two of them are Corvettes. You know, and one of them is a Camaro. They could have broken up a little bit. One Corvette, one Camaro, and maybe one something, something a little bit different. But they didn't, and that's the only disadvantage I, I like about this set. There's so many. Oh, hold on, sorry guys, the light is not the greatest in here. There's so many great manufacturers out there of race vehicles. They could have put a Ferrari in here, you know, especially during a time of, of them racing the GT40s back in the day when, when Ford came in, you know, one, two, and three. So many crazy different Le Mans cars that they could put in here, uh, but they stuck with three Chevy. So I'm wondering if Chevy had a, a big hand in uh, promoting, you know, funding, you know, this little project right here. So. All right, guys, but that's it. Um, you know, as always, you know, subscribe to my channel if you like it. You know, give me some thumbs up. You know, ask me any questions in the comments or whatever, you know, or if you just want to say something, um, you know, let, let me know. So, but as always, this is Roger Dodger with Diecast Corner. Everyone have a great day.